It's a race defined by skill, speed, and strategy, battling the North Shore's rugged terrain and unpredictable weather, testing the endurance of teams. This is the 2021 John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon on WDIO. Hello and welcome to our live coverage of the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon from Duluth. I'm Bailey Warfield. Over the next couple of hours, we're going to give you an up close look at this race, one of the biggest and best sled dog races in America, I have to say. Joined on the trail, of course, by WDIO Sports Director Chelsea Brown. Yeah, absolutely, and this is one of the premier sporting events here in the Northland every single winter. We enjoy it, but of course, this year there's some changes. One of them happens to be that the North Shore is not starting at Billy's Bar. We're about, um, let's say, a half mile away from Billy's Bar yep. right now, but that's due to the lack of snow. Even though it is snowing right now, I'm sure the mushrooms and teams are going to enjoy this. And then, of course, the finish line will be a little bit different. Of course, the biggest one, no yeah. fans. No. no fans, that's due to, obviously, their COVID precautions. Right, but and despite the it does remain the excitement from the mushers and the teams were already hearing dogs barking out on the road to get on the trail, I would say. And this year, we have 17 teams competing in the marathon, including Ryan Weddington. He won the 2020 race last January and is back defending his time. Nick Frecking of Finland, Minnesota. Colleen and Errol Wallen, one of fan favorites there. You'll hear their stories a little bit later. And while it's been a cancellation, you run on sled dogs. It's a social sport. Take some extra precautions to be safe for everyone. We'll be covering all the course for the Tuesday's finish on air and on Joining us now is Monica Hendrickson in the Grease Marathon. And Monica, we have to start. Did you think you'd even be having a race this year? No, we did not. Um, when those permits came through and the snow came when we needed it, it was everything has fallen into place. We were just so happy that we're here, and we thank all the fans, all of our sponsors, our lead volunteers, our board of directors. There have been so many hours put into this. We're already exhausted, many sleepless <laughs> nights, but it was worth it. You hear the dogs howling in the back, and they're yelping. That's what this is all about. We did it for them. Absolutely. And, of course, we heard a little bit about it there, but tell us a little more about, the, about some of the safety precautions this year. Yeah, so our safety precautions, obviously, everyone's masked trying to stay six feet apart it's hard because it's bear grease is a family um, but we're also trying to keep all the dog teams separated so we had to really stagger our races um, we went with a lot less volunteers so that means those of us on the ground are even more tired um, but it is what it is you know we just want to keep everyone safe we travel together for seven days almost to end we need everyone healthy what's been some of the reaction from mushers finally getting to race in this race uh, I think they were in a little disbelief, too, because they've been feeding us information about the trail. We've, they've been talking about their concerns. We worked really, we were a unified group this year, more than ever, and, and just trying to take everyone's actions and, and their feedback in. And this morning there were a lot of wow moments. Um, just thrilled. And they're so appreciative of everyone because there are so many races that were canceled. We're one of the few that's running. And we're really glad that we can be a, that qualifier for Iditarod. We have a couple people trying to get into Iditarod, and that was that was really the the diamond that we were trying to get to. Absolutely. And so I texted you last night. One yeah. word, all caps. Snow. Yeah. <laughs> so talk about how the warmer temperatures and kind of the lack of snow this year has affected planning for the race. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, luckily we've had some decent snow on trails. They you know they're able to run. Um, with just a few inches on the ground. The biggest concern for us is the, the trail base. 
you need about a good 12 inches to get that snow hook in for safety. So we've made some changes. We're starting not with our 12 dogs. We're starting out with 10 in that marathon and requiring two snow hooks to try to just increase the safety. But, you know, the dogs will run in anything and so will a musher. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Monica, yeah, for your know. time. We look forward to seeing you along yeah, the trails. We'll the trail. Of course. Well, the sled team's obviously getting ready for the race, which it will begin in just a few minutes. Yeah, uh, we're Fairgrass covered really just beginning for <laughs> us. We'll let you go. Yes, thank you. <laughs> When we come back, we will bring you more live coverage from the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon, plus a four-time Bear Grease champion joins us with an insider's look at the challenges for the teams hoping to cross that finish line first. All that when WDIO's live coverage from the Bear Grease continues. Honey, we can start running. The Northland is known for its beautiful landscapes and easy access to nature. But what really sets it apart are its people. People who care, they're engaged in their community, people who step up and make a difference in the lives of their neighbors. Creative people driving business through innovation, unique events that inspire and bring us together. We're committed to bringing you these stories. Stories from the community we're proud to call home. Darren Danielson and Bailey Warfield on WDIO News at 10. Cook County, Minnesota is the perfect winter wonderland. Crisp, clear days, incredible amounts of snow, and miles of groomed trails in the Superior National Forest. Plan your winter getaway at visitcookcounty.com. This is the 2021 John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon on WDIA. Well, welcome back. We are just minutes away from the start of the 37th running of the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. It's a race that covers 300 miles up the North Shore. Not a view a lot of people get in the winter time. It's a course that's rugged, it's scenic, and it tests the endurance of these amazing athletes on both two and four legs. And as we mentioned, the course has definitely just changed this year a little bit. Normally, we'd start down the road at Billy's Bar. Today, we're starting at tr a trailhead just down the road over the next three days. They'll head north past seven checkpoints and along the way the teams will use a variety of strategies, racing, resting, and keeping their energy up on this journey of endurance for the mushers and their dogs. And so much of this race really depends on those trail conditions out there. The Bear Grease has seen everything from lots of snow to little snow. It hasn't rained since I've covered it, but I hear that has been an issue before. Mild temperatures, bone chilling cold we had a couple of years ago it really runs the gamut yeah you can't ever forget those cold ones but so what does mother nature have in well the bear grease is shortly ready to get underway and we're going to be looking at some decent conditions now it's going to be mild. Still seeing some snow showers on and off throughout the day. And again, as I head up the North Shore, temperatures are going to get a little bit warmer as well. Winds will be out of the east northeast on Sunday. And then by the time we get toward Monday, it's going to switch more over to the west. And then that's going to be at their back, but warm, wild conditions through Tuesday. to try to cross that I'm Bear Grease Chain. He joins us with some of the mild temperatures. <laughs> Absolutely. Eli, what?
what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. Ladies and gentlemen, for the 37th annual running of the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. Let's Cook County, Minnesota is the perfect winter wonderland. Crisp, clear days, incredible amounts of snow, and miles of groomed trails in the Superior National Forest. Plan your winter getaway at visitcookcounty.com. Your time is important, so kick off your day with Good Morning Northland. A hometown forecast you can rely on to prepare for the day ahead. Up to the minute school closing alerts so your family can adjust on the fly. The latest details from the big stories developing overnight and happening now. Local news you need to know. Community issues, events, and people that define life in the Northland. Tune in to the team the Northland trusts for morning news. Good morning, Northland. Weekdays on WDIO. Honey, we can start running. The Northland is known for its beautiful landscapes and easy access to nature. But what really sets it apart are its people. People who care, they're engaged in their community, people who step up and make a difference in the lives of their neighbors. Creative people driving business through innovation, unique events that inspire and bring us together. We're committed to bringing you these stories. Stories from the community we're proud to call home. Darren Danielson and Bailey Warfield on WDIO News at 10. Cook County, Minnesota is the perfect winter wonderland. Crisp, clear days, incredible amounts of snow, and miles of groomed trails in the Superior National Forest. Plan your winter getaway at visitcookcounty.com. All right, welcome back, everyone. We just got the two-minute warning that the race is about to start, but we're going to squeeze in one more question with Nathan. Nathan, we just heard from Monica that they're going to have the mushers start with 10 dogs. How is that going to affect their strategy as the race launches here? It, it won't. These guys are set up to do that. They could have gone out with eight. They could have gone out with 14. They're good. They're qualified mushers. But I trust the Bear Grease this, the decision on 10, so they'll, they'll be good to go. Last thing, in your opinion, anyone we should be keeping a close eye on this year? Aaron Reddington, Blake Frecking. Them are the two that'll give Ryan the run. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. Thanks so much, Nathan. We appreciate your time. We are very excited uh, to get things going here. We'll yeah. let you go. Enjoy the race. We'll see if we can talk to you again along the trail. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. And we are expecting to see dogs uh, take the shoot before long. Uh, we're hearing lots of yelping. Yeah. 
You can and, hear that the entire show. <laughs> and one of the things that the race does every year, bib number one, is always John Bear Grease. They send the spirit of John Bear Grease down the trail first. So that's what we just heard. John Bear Grease has taken the trail. We always uh, love to hear that. Oh, I guess 10 seconds to John leaving. You might be able to hear the countdown over our mics there. A lot of fun. What are you excited about this year, Chelsea? Everything? <laughs> I'm just happy that there is a bear grease. I think we were kind of up in the air about whether or not there was going to be a race. So I think the biggest thing right now is just enjoying it. Absolutely. We're going to step to the side right now as tears come out of the chute. Up first, we have Peter McClellan of Isabella, Minnesota. His team is making the way right now to the start. Peter is 51 years old, but he first ran a dog team back in 1989. Can you believe that? On a winter camping trip, of all things, hasn't obviously looked back since. In 1995, Peter started his touring business, which is called White Wilderness Sled Dog Adventures, specializing in hands-on trips where people can mush their own team of sled dogs. His wife and two teenage kids are all involved in the business. That's usually how it all gets started. One person gets interested and then everyone else follows. They are involved in both the business and the tours. Peter ran his first John Bear Grease race in 2000. So, wow. kind of a pro. Absolutely. He's seen a lot of iterations of the Bear Grease. You know, the race used to be up the shore and then back down to Duluth, and they would finish at Billy's Bar. The last couple years, it's been the start at Billy's and the finish up in Grand Portage, just a one-way trip up the shore. But we do have dogs in the shoot. Peter's getting them ready there, making sure everybody looks good and uh is as organized as possible with a dog team, right? <laughs> that, that's how you can organize chaos, maybe? I think and also excitement. I think that's the best way to describe it. You can hear those dogs. They are raring to go. Getting everybody in place. The John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon has officially started since the spirit of John Bear Grease is on the trail. But the first uh, physical human musher is about to come down the trail next. Obviously, one thing we're missing are the fans just lined along. That used to be one of my favorite parts. Oh, there he goes. Peter McClellan, the first musher to head out of the chute here of the 2021 John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. A good-looking team. Oh, yeah. Black dogs in this team. Just the one guy, and Peter McClellan is on the trail. At the Manitou Crossing Kennels, and then... Ended up returning and we have another season. team lining now, up in the shoot. They're getting these dogs the ready. This is Alice White times, of Ely, Minnesota. Is she is 32 Marathon. years old. She's Your actually a veterinary technician, so Alice she's White got some Ely, dog Minnesota. care experience. She operates a small kennel of Siberian Huskies the near the Boundary Waters Canoe United Area, the BWCA. She was drawn to mushing many years ago at age 11. It was kind of a natural combination of her love of animals and the outdoors. So she began her career in mushing by handling for Blake and Jennifer Frecking, who you're going to see in a little bit here. She's run the Bear Grease 120 multiple times. That's kind of like the half marathon version, as well as the Gunflint Mail Run, the Wolf Track Classic, the UP 200, the Can-Am 100. Plenty of experience here with some of these shorter races. She's run other mid-distance sled dog races, too. So this year, you heard that she uh, has handled for Blake and Jen. So this year, she actually partnered up with them to run this race. It's her first full Bear Grease Marathon. Some of the dogs are from her own kennel called Wolf Moon Kennel, and some are from Manitou Crossing, which is the Freckings Kennel. Wow. Kind of an interesting uh, little partnership here. I'm curious to see how they do. Well, if it's riding with the Freckings, she's in good hands. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Mushing, uh, very experienced mushers up here. So I'm sure she is very excited. She'll be familiar with the first part of this trail because the 120 for most of the trail follows the same as the marathon. So she'll be familiar with that first part of the trail and then uh, keep going beyond what she would have in the 120. Looks like she's hopping on the sled, pulling up the pick, and we should expect her team to head goes. out. There they go. Alice White of Ely, Minnesota. Right behind her, wearing bib number four from Grand Rye, Minnesota, Karen Arthur. 
Here she goes. I always love the coordination of the teams and their booties. We saw blue on Peter McClellan. Obviously, we just saw red with Alan. It's amazing how many of those booties they have to pack, too. You think about four feet, 10 to 14 dogs, depending on the race. And they put new booties on for every leg of the race. So if it's a 10 leg race, you can do the math. That's, that is a lot of booties. A lot of the mushers bring upwards of 500 booties with them wow. on a race, which is pretty incredible. Absolutely. Looks like we have a new team heading into the shoot right now. This is Aaron Altmus of Grand Marais, Minnesota. This will be Aaron's 10th year racing sled dogs in her fourth Bear Grease Marathon. Her best run back in 2015, where she placed fourth and was named Rookie of the Year. Now, Erin lives in the high hills off the Gunflint Trail with her husband, Matt, and their three-year-old, Sylvia, and their 30 Alaskan Huskies from the Mush Lake Racing Kennel. When not training dogs, Erin is a nurse working at her local hospital. She began doing tours for her YMCA camp after college, and then became hooked on sled dog racing ever since. Erin's also run in the UP 200 and the K&M. She says this year with so much change and unknowns, Erin is thrilled to participate in the Bear Grease. I think a lot of the mushers are genuinely just happy to be racing this year, getting in a race. A lot of times this isn't their first race, but it is this year. Yeah, no doubt. And I know her husband, Matt, has run the race too. So another example of a a family of mushers who uh, can probably feed off each other, give each other tips. Her dogs are really jumping. They really want to start this race. <laughs> oh, and there they go, coming our way. Blue booties on this team. And that's bib number four, Aaron Altimus, heading out on the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. Started mushing his paint cloud. It's kind of been a family affair. She started with mud, a plywood sled made on skis. Looks like we just got a little tangle and Nathan helping out along their way. I our, love that. I our love race that. analyst. <laughs> this is a family. It is. It they is. help each other out. It's a competition, but it's a family. And uh, got the dog untangled. Aaron's on the trail. Next in the shoot is Sarah Kiefer. Sarah's from Burnsville, Minnesota, a suburb of the Twin Cities down there. Now she is running a team of Ryan Reddington's dogs. So uh, this will be an interesting race for her as well. She's 37 years old. She grew up in St. Cloud and said she used to mush the family dogs, get this, on a sled made of skis, plywood, and two by fours. That is a uh, diamond in the rough version of mushing there. So this is pretty incredible. She watched the Bear Grease in 2017 and she volunteered to help a musher for that year's I did a rod. Last year she did do the Bear Grease 120 and won rookie of the year. And like all the mushers, Kiefer will be carrying trail mail in her sled. It's a race tradition reminding of the reason John Bear Grease ran a dog team up and down the North Shore in the late 1800s. And actually this is really cool. Her own art is featured on the trail mail envelopes this year. She loved the composition of a photo that she saw of a couple of Reddington's dogs that she ran last year. It inspired her watercolor painting. So she's got a lot of connections to the race this year. Very cool for her to be running the full marathon after designing the trail mail. I know. I love that story that you did. Such a unique touch. And she is now on the trail for her very first John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. You can see that lime green Reddington sled. Jennifer and there she goes. Jennifer, a stranger to the Bear Grease Trail, began mushing when she was eight years old. Family owns the Manitou Crossing Kennel, home to 60 racing All Siberian right, Huskies. heading up to the shoot next the is Jennifer Frecking. And in second place in... Jennifer started racing sled dogs when Santa, of all people, gave her a sled when she was only eight years old. Today, she owns Manitou Crossing Kennels with her husband, Blake, which is also home to 60 racing Siberian Huskies. Jennifer has raced in several Bear Grease marathons and placed second back in 2005 and 2019. She's hoping to take home, of course, the top spot this year. 
Jennifer ran the Iditarod 2 in 2008, earning the Most Inspirational Musher Award for Overcoming Adversity with a Positive Attitude. If you've ever met Jennifer, that just describes her to a T. Mushing obviously is a freaking family sport. Jennifer's mother was also a musher. Now Jennifer is training a third generation of mushers. Her daughters are helping train puppies and competing in the Bear Grease Cup Run. The health and safety of Jennifer's team is very important to her as she is a veterinarian at the Ely Veterinarian Club. Yeah, you know, all these mushers love their dogs. No doubt about that. But Jennifer, for me, just stands out as someone who just really loves her dogs and just really takes good care of them. Dog safety is so important to all of these mushers, and um, you see that in the fact that some of them are veterinarians themselves and have that experience. Knowing how to make sure their dogs are hydrated along the race, knowing how to make sure they're taking in enough calories, that's a big thing. And one of the uh, most important qualifiers for a sled dog to make a team is that they rest well because they've got to get their sleep while they can while they're not on the trail um, to have the energy, of course, to, to run the full 300 miles. Absolutely. Excited to see Jennifer go out. I know their dogs, um, I can't remember what breed exactly they are. They're a different breed of huskies where they're a little... Siberian huskies. Siberian, yes. They have thicker coats, so that her dogs run better when it's colder. Oh. So it'll be interesting to see how she does this year. And here comes Jennifer. Very man. Well, it was two years ago, we saw the Freckings finish both first and second, and I can say that was a chilly year, so they probably did very, very well in that race. Great point. Yeah, the, the race that year, that last stretch, it was windy, it was snowy, it was cold, it was conditions that um, us reporters on the trail did not particularly enjoy, but clearly those Freckings Siberian Huskies they were loving it. They did just it. fine. Yes. <laughs> that was uh, the year they came out on top. One, two. All right. In the shoot right now should be Mary Manning of Hovland, Minnesota. Mary and her husband own the Doodle Dog Kennel. I love that name. That include about 35 active and retired sled dogs. She's been running and training dogs since about 1997, competing in a variety of races on and off over the years in Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Montana, and Maine. This is Mary's second attempt at the Bear Grease Marathon. She says she loves the challenge and adventure of training the dogs and helping them work together. Mary was about 30 years old, and she wanted to spend some time outdoors, and she says she got a cheap sled, couple of dogs that led to a few more dogs and you probably know the rest from here um, <laughs> and now racing in the north end's biggest sled dog race she is racing in the bear grease marathon i love hearing stories of how people get involved in this sport and obviously it leads to more sleds more dogs more <laughs> everything because they just get hooked there's something addicting about it apparently because this is so many people's story oh we had two dogs we tried ski jarring and all of a sudden, here they are, Mary Manning, taking the trail with her 10 dogs in a 300-mile race. I all know. All of a sudden. So there she goes. And next up will be the reigning champion, Ryan Reddington. He's, this is his fifth John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. I actually had a chance to catch up with the two-time Bear Grease champ prior to the race. This is our defending champion, here to try it again on the 37th running of the John Bear Green Sled Dog Marathon, Ryan Reddington. Says he was born into mushing, and why not? His grandpa, Joe Reddington, started the idea. Four years ago, an Alaskan musher entered the Bear Grease for the first time and shook things up a bit. Well, I've ran the race different than everyone else. I've wanted to give my dog some good rest on the way back. Ryan Reddington's fast start didn't pay off that year, but he learned the lesson and has since won the race twice. Second win for you. How did it feel crossing the finish line here? It felt very, very awesome. Yeah, very happy. So he has reason to be excited for 2021. Well, it's a dog race. Anything could happen, but I'm here to try to do the best we can and try to try to repeat. There was no question about whether he'd be back. It's a great race and great, 
great competitors, great volunteers, and we love everything about the Bear Grease. He's been living in Brule, Wisconsin since this fall to train. Warm October, but we got finally got some snow, and not a lot of snow, but enough, and um, we got good miles, and I feel really confident on what our training has been for, for the Bear Grease. The week before the race, he stuck to training by snowmobile since it's safer. Looking ahead, Reddington says he'll miss the crowds at the start. I have so many, so many fans that come and cheer us on, especially the kids from Secret Forest Play School. He'll miss seeing fans at the checkpoints too. But at the end of the day, this race is really all about the dogs. No matter what, we're going to have a lot of fun in Bear Grease. And Ryan has hit the trail, the 2020 defending champion, two-time Bear Grease champion is now out on the trail. A lot of eyes are going to be watching him this year to see what he does. His dogs are just fast. He likes to run a fast race, and I think he always likes to push the pace. That's kind of his uh, strategy, if you will. But, yep, he's he's going to be out there. He's going to be the one probably pushing the pace once again this year. I imagine he will, absolutely. And next up uh, in the shoot is Blake Frecking. You've heard his name a few times so far <laughs> in this broadcast already. Wife Jen Frecking already out on the trail, but Blake also, of course, of Finland, Minnesota. He's 47. Blake is also a two-time Bear Grease Marathon champion. He had to wait 15 years between those two wins. He won back in 2004 and then in 2019, as we discussed that year where it was so cold, so windy, those Siberian Huskies did really well in that race. But he's also, of course, run the Iditarod, the Yukon Quest, both up in Alaska, the Hudson Bay Quest, the Race to the Sky, many other sled dog races. He and his wife, Jen, as we mentioned, they own that Manitou Crossing Kennels where they raise the Siberian Huskies. Blake is an engineer and air tanker base manager for the U.S. Forest Service. Something tells me this guy likes the outdoors a little bit. Only a little, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You know, at least uh, all parts of his life probably mesh together pretty well. Oh, yes. They're all uh, fairly dependent on the weather. He's uh, He knows what he's doing when he's out in the Minnesota Northwoods, I think. Absolutely. I wonder how the family dynamic is on the trail. Have you ever asked if they pass each other and they're like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> you know, I haven't asked about on the trail okay. when they're racing, but I did ask once about how they choose their teams. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's kind of like the wall and sometimes one of them runs the younger team and one of them runs the more experienced dogs, but you'll see this dog with the spot over his eye. That's Eagle. One of Blake's kind of tried and true lead dogs has taken him up and down this trail many times. <laughs> And now he's back on that trail again. Well, Bailey, you mentioned the Wallens. Obviously, Errol Wallen, grown up around mushing his entire life. And today he's taking on the John Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon for the very first time. Errol Wallen made the most of his senior football season, even though it started late and ended early. The senior captain helped lead Silver Bay to a 5-2 overall record, shutting out a cherry team in the nine-man semifinals after the Tigers handed the Mariners their first loss of the season. Um, we were a super good team, super uh, united as like a family, you could say. And once, once we got that down, it was definitely going to be hard stopping us. But when football season ended and hockey season was delayed, Wallen ran his dogs. Anytime I could, because that's like the only thing we could be doing. So I was pretty fortunate that we had dogs at that time. Wallen is the son of Colleen Wallen, who has been racing in the Bear Grease since 1995. Arrow has been racing since he was a teenager. Last year, he finished his second Bear Grease 120. It was after that race that he decided he wanted to take on a new challenge. I was super excited and like pumped up and like super tired and then I just looked at one of my handlers I can't remember who it was and I just said I'm gonna send you the pole next year. Arrow will be mushing the top team from Silver Creek sled dogs while Colleen handles the naughty puppies as she likes to call them. Arrow's dad Ward will be handling for the two of them. As his parents they believe he's ready for this race. As we do sorting you know sorting through my team and his team he knows what choices he's making and they're all his choices. We don't push them in one way or another because this is his gig, if you will. 
At 18 years old, Arrow will be one of the youngest mushers to set out on the trail up the North Shore. He says some of the biggest differences from racing in the Bear Grease 120 to the full marathon are the competition, more dogs, and the lack of rest. But he's excited for his team. We got a lot of veterans, so that's cool. We got a good amount of three-year-olds, and uh, they've had the most training they've ever had, and they've looked the best they've ever had. So it should be a super fun and exciting race. And he knows if he needs any guidance, he can look towards those who introduced him to the sport. It's just run your own race. You know, somebody goes flying by you, don't chase them. Just keep your, keep your wits about you. Great advice from mom there, Colleen Wall. And we just saw Arrow take off down the chute. Colleen is now at the starting line. Now her first Bear Grease, 1995. She's run in every race since then. Colleen's sons, Ian and Arrow, have grown up around dogs. This year, she's running the puppy team. She calls them natty puppies in the marathon while Arrow is running the main team. Colleen got interested in sled dog racing after watching the Bear Grease on TV. Then heading out to the highway to checkpoint at 10 p.m. when it was negative 25 degrees below zero, she watched the teams come and go. She then volunteered the very following year and soon was racing, of course, her own dogs. Colleen has run in the Walla Gold West Esslinger Classic, the race at Solon Springs, Klondike Derby, Wolf Track Classic, the Midnight Run, Can-Am, UP 200, the Gunflint <laughs> Mail. I think she's running it all. <laughs> she's got quite the resume when it comes to mushing. And uh, yes, always a fan favorite, as we mentioned earlier. Um, people know her name because Absolutely. she's been around this race for so long. And she's probably one of the friendliest people along the trail. She loves to wave. If she recognizes you, she might even try and chat with you while she's trying to go by, but it's oh. a short chat. <laughs> it is. But she'll try. <laughs> All right, the naughty puppies are off. They are. Heading into the race, she's just excited to see what her and her team can get into. A nice bright yellow jacket. It'll be easy to spot her this year. It will. See? Waving left and right. <laughs> Since 1995, Silver Creek Sled Dogs has had a team participate in the John Bergery Sled Dog Marathon. This year, the kennel will have two with Arrow and Colleen Wallen. This will mark Arrow's first time running the marathon. It will mark Colleen's 16th. I mean, I have done the race for several years. I've started to tell people that John Bergers and I delivered mail together <laughs> up and down the shore. With their kennel located just northeast of two harbors, the Wallens frequent the Bear Grease race trails for their training. But no, the Minnesota terrain doesn't compare to most races. I remember when we were first starting out mushing, um, Doug Swingley got up. Uh, he had run the Iditarod, and he said, uh, the Iditarod Trail sled dog race is a walk in the park compared to the John Bear Grease sled dog marathon. Colleen is among the local mushers the Northland adores during January, but over time, she's seen first-timers struggle to finish the longest sled dog marathon in the lower 48 states. It's a tough race. Not often do people coming to this race from out of state, not often do they finish. It's, it's an amazingly grueling, tough race with the hills. While Arrow takes the rein on the A team, Colleen plans to race a team of young pups. I said, you know, we have these naughty, naughty puppies. They chew, they fight, they roll. Let's hook them up. Last year, when Governor Walls issued a stay-at-home order, she put in nearly 300 miles with these dogs. Colleen plans to take it easy, but thinks these pups have what it takes to finish the bear grease. So she's excited to see what her and her team get into. You sometimes see the light bulb go on very soon, and sometimes it takes a couple years, but it's worth the wait. It's working. I got one of those. Um, and he... Our... See, running down the trail right now is Bailey Vitello. This is fun. Another Bailey <laughs> involved in the Bear Grease. This is Bailey's first Bear Grease sled dog marathon. He is in Minnesota from all the way over in New Hampshire. They did the road trip across the country to run this race. He's just 23 years old. He helps own and operate Northeast Outfitters. They're an interactive educational company, kind of cool. The youngest of three boys grew up in a mushing family. We have a musher in between them, 
But sneak peek, his dad is also running this race. We have another parent-child team <laughs> running the race, a duo running the race. His racing career started at age four, believe it or not. He ran those sprint races when he was that little before he moved up to mid and long distance races. He's got quite the resume as well. A lot of races over on the East Coast. He and his dad, Greg, who we will see in a couple minutes, are hoping to compete in the 2023 Iditarod. The Bear Grease is an Iditarod qualifying race. So a lot of the mushers this year, I know, they spend years racking up their Iditarod qualifiers. And with so many races canceled this year, that's part of the reason the Bear Grease field is a little bit bigger because this is one of the only I did around qualifiers that's able to actually happen. And Monica was talking about that a little bit earlier, just how she wanted to give these teams and these mushers the opportunity to do that. But up in the shoot right now is Erin Letzring of Skagway, Alaska. Now, she is no stranger to Bear Grease. She grew up in the Duluth area training sled dogs, but today will be the first time she is racing in the marathon. She started running sled dogs when she was in her teens. She ran the UP 200 last year. down the trail this year this is Erin crossing just now in her very first bear grease with the bright green on I love to see it very exciting to run your first bear grease sled dog marathon I imagine there's some jitters but also a lot of excitement Absolutely. Chatting with her, she wants to finish, which I think is obviously air, every team's goal in this race. But it is so challenging. You hear from just teams like a Colleen Wallen who's run this race so many times before. This, when you go through the mountains of this race, it's a very hilly race. <laughs> and so it gets very, very challenging along the way. And a lot of those hills, people don't realize the dogs are not just pulling the musher up the hill. The musher usually hops off the sled and kind of is running up the hill themselves, hanging onto that sled. So they're not really just along for the ride the whole time. They are also doing a lot of uh, physical activity themselves out there. They run along the race. You see it at different parts, just depending on the hills and just the snow and what's underneath them. But yeah, that's why they're so in shape physically. Don't think that these rushers just ride along the entire time. Definitely not. All right, next up, we've got Greg Vitello in the shoot now. He's of Point Lookout, New York. You just saw Bailey Vitello take off a couple minutes ago. This is his dad, Greg, 45 years old. He is a veteran of this sport. He started mushing at 23 years old, which coincidentally is the age his son is now running the Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. I love this story. They got into... Uh, he and his wife got into the sport after their family dog was actually injured in a car accident and they started to read about dog sports as part of their dog's recovery and here we are dog mushing became a way of life for them and he has coached mentored and trained other dog teams and mushers along the way recently he's been focused on growing and training his own kennel and again he hopes to compete in the 2023 I did a rod in a couple of years there goes Greg Vitello and you've heard about John Bear Grace. You've heard that name many times. He's a man of tradition and story. Many generations after he built a name for himself on the North Shore, a native artist is putting his legacy in paint. There's a hundred other things he could have done. But for 20 years in the late 1800s, John Bear Grease connected North Shore communities, bringing mail on his dog sled. Storytelling is such a huge, important part of just indigenous culture, learning the stories and hearing the stories. And Bear Grease stories painted some of the picture of Sam Zimmerman's childhood. He's just such a, a, an amazing regional and national hero, well, he, just a figure that's so important to us. A figure that inspired Zimmerman to see the landscape with fresh eyes and pick up a paintbrush. It's weird when you can feel the spirit of the piece and you have to kind of just trust it and go along with it. With each stroke, he hopes the portrait conveys peace and power. 
And there are always messages in Zimmerman's work. There's going to be another story in the stars. 52 points of light represent Bear Grease's journey around the sun, and the Ursa Major constellation honors his Ojibwe clan, the Bear Clan. If I could meet John Bear Grease, I would want to talk to him about, you know, his experiences with the animals and what was, you know, what was the most beautiful day that you ever had. You know, talk to me about something that you saw, like just to hear his stories. I think that would just be amazing. But for now, Zimmerman will do his part to pass the legend on. This is not my story. This is his story. Well, from John Beargrease to John Fisher, the next musher has just taken the trail. This is John Fisher of Cook. Minnesota with a single lead dog taking him up the trail. He's 63 years old, and I love this, too. He fell in love with running sled dogs after reading Call of the Wild when he was just 10 years old. So he went to veterinary school. He moved to northern Minnesota to open his vet practice back in 1985, and that's the very same year that John started mushing. He ran some sprint races for a couple of years. He handled for some people. He ran his first Bear Grease 130 back then in 1988. He finished seventh in the 2004 Bear Grease Marathon. He did do the Bear Grease last year, and I believe he had to scratch last year. So I'm sure he's excited to be back, giving it another shot. Absolutely. And back once again, Charmaine Morrison of Bozeman, Montana. Charmaine got hooked with running sled dogs when she was just 14 years old after learning about the Iditarod in middle school. She's a student at Montana State University. Sherman grew up on the family's horse ranch where she learned to love animals and adventure. She's built her kennel with the help from Robin Kara Greger of Enduro Kennels. Last year, Sherman won the eight dog Rocky Mountain Triple Crown, a series of three 100 mile races. She's also raced the Junior Iditarod Pedigree Stage Shop and Race to the Sky. Charmaine hopes to run future Iditarod and Yukon Quest races. And she's getting off to a great start. Started at 14 years old. It's fun to have these mushers from across the country here. This year, especially, it seems like there's quite a few of them. We've got some Montana mushers, New Hampshire, New York, Minnesota. The next musher after Charmaine here is from Iowa. So, I mean, we are really uh, seeing people from all over the continental United States. And Charmaine is now out on the trail. These dogs look ready. They do. And I think I remember running into her when she was finished with last year's race. And she kind of just had a big sigh of relief. So it's great to see her back on the trails with her team. Absolutely. And you see another team will be taking the shoot here shortly. This is Kevin Mathis. He's the one from Iowa that I just mentioned. He did this race last year. He's 50 years old. He started mushing a little bit later in life compared to a lot of the folks we've been hearing about today who started this when, you know, they were four or maybe even less than that. He's been racing sled dogs now for six years. Last year, he did compete in the Bear Grease. He also competed in the Race to the Sky, the Can-Am, and the Gunflint Mail Run. He has been a pharmacist for 15 years. He and his wife have three boys. So what inspired him to start running sled dogs in his 40s? He jokes that at age 44, it may have been a midlife crisis. <laughs> it was either a Corvette or mushing. And he chose mushing. Ooh, I wonder which one is uh, more expensive, though. <laughs> that is a great question. This is a, not a cheap sport when you're keeping a kennel of dogs and feeding them. And I remember talking to Kevin on the trail last year, and he shared that one of the things he enjoys before the race is doing some research about what to eat for himself on the trail that will give him a good protein and keep his energy up out there. Does he have a go-to snack? That you know of? I, I don't think so. I think he just said he does, he brings a lot of protein bars. And, okay. You know, obviously stuff that's not going to freeze out there in the sled. Um, you know, a lot of the mushers, of course, are very concerned about what to feed their dogs out on the trail. Mm -hmm. Stop and give them snack breaks on some of the longer runs. And then, of course, they have their big meals at each of the checkpoints. But the mushers got to keep their energy up, too, to make sure they take care of their teams. I asked Arrow Wallen before the race what his go-to was any uh -huh. guesses it's very simple pizza 
PB and J sandwich. Ah, there we go. There we go. And Kevin is out on the trail. Our second to last full marathon musher. That's out on the trail. Bye. Only one more. So fast. Another musher from Montana. Josie Thayer. Josie began mushing as a teenager. She says her parents wouldn't allow her to own horses, but said yes to dogs. Do we think they're rethinking maybe <laughs> how many dogs they got themselves into? <laughs> they All may the be. dogs have taken Josie on many adventures, including handling for Aaron Burmeister and Jesse Royer, doing tours in Montana and working on the glacier, doing summer tours in Juneau, Alaska. She's excited to see the scenic trails of the Bear Grease. In her free time, Josie enjoys doing half marathons and enjoying the great outdoors. Clearly, Josie is a very outdoorsy person. If she's interested in sled dogs and also half marathons. Can you believe that? That's a lot of your year spent training. That's a lot of miles. One way or another. Yeah, she uh, definitely puts a lot of miles on, I am sure. And she will be the final musher in the full marathon to take the trail. Of course, she's not the final musher heading out on the trail. Oh, we do no. have many more mushers heading out today in the John Bear Great Sled Dog Marathon. The 37th running of the John Bear Great Sled Dog Marathon in 41 years. So it's been canceled a couple times. But amazingly, not in this pandemic year. COVID couldn't cancel this year, and we're very thankful, as well as the sponsors, the organizers, the teams, the mushers. There she goes, Josie Thayer of Montana, taking on the Bear Grease Sled Dog Marathon. Amazing how the dogs go quiet. Once they start running, all that barking, all that excitement, they just go quiet. Because they're out there, they're running, they're doing what they were so excited to do and the reason that they were uh, barking so much. That's one of my favorite things is to hear they're yelping, they're leaping, see them in the chute ready to go and then they're out on the trail. They're just going to work. It's yeah, it's just pure excitement. They know exactly what mission they're about to be doing and what's yep. ahead, and that's why they 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 are ready to go. They're amazing athletes. They really are. Absolutely, it's wild to see them pulling on that sled. And while the marathoners make their way down the trail, mid and short distance mushers will get underway in just about an hour. They're getting ready. And for many of those mushers, the John Bergery Sled Dog Marathon is a notch in their belt on the way to qualifying for something like the Iditarod. This year, one of the youngest mushers is taking on the junior version of both races. Yes, he's an eighth grader from Brule, Wisconsin, and at just 14 years old, mushing has already been a lifelong sport. In many mushing families, if you can walk... Ever since I could walk... You can probably hang on to a sled. It's just calming and being out there with the dogs. Morgan Martins loves being on the trails or in the family dog yard. They're really, really good dogs. <laughs> and this year, when two-time Bear Grease champ Ryan Reddington came down from Alaska to do races in the lower 48, he set up his kennel right across the driveway. Reddington has taken Morgan under his wing, or lime-colored sleeve, encouraging him to challenge himself with the junior Bear Grease this year. We thought might as well do the try to do the 120 with our dogs. It's a pretty big step up. After 120 miles along the North Shore, Morgan will head further north to do 140 miles in the Alaskan wilderness in the junior Iditarod. For that race, he'll run Reddington dogs. They're really fast and they can keep it up for a while. If you stop, they immediately start barking like what the heck why are we stopping but morgan says even if they want to um, keep running it's his job and his main goal to get them to the finish safe and happy <laughs> yeah and that team that he's going to run up in the junior iditarod is the team that sarah kiefer is running in the full marathon so can you keep up there's two reddington teams in the wow. full marathon this year the one that uh, sarah is running for okay. ryan will be the one 
that is run in the junior Iditarod later for wow. Morgan. Wow. I know. Wow. A lot of miles for those dogs. A lot of connections in this yes. uh, in this field. Absolutely. Well, and in the mid-distance race, it's Otter Run Kennel out of Irma, Wisconsin that has dominated that race. Since 2015, the kennel has won five of six mid-distance races, and the best part is they keep it all in the family. Aaron Schuweiler rode to a victory in last year's Bear Grease 120, coming in around 5.40 a.m. at the Trestle Inn. She was about 45 minutes ahead of the second place finisher and felt relieved to have carried on the family's dominance. It feels good. <laughs> kind of a big sigh of relief because I was, I was really nervous. I mean, it's big shoes to fill. Martha is amazing. Aaron is the daughter-in-law to Martha Schuweiler, who strung together four straight Bear Grease 120 wins from 2015 to 2018. Last year, Martha took home a new title as the Barry's 40 champion. She plans to race the 40 once again, while Aaron preps to repeat as the 120 champion. Well, so I ran Bear Grease last year and she ran Hopper Dog and we like both won those respective races. So we we're just like, okay, we'll both try and defend our titles this year. Chad Schuweiler, Aaron's husband and Martha's son, is the mastermind behind the training, race plan, and handling for the two of them. He's also been known to do just about anything even sleep next to a dog to calm them down and make sure they are rested before getting back on the trail. It's taken years for the Schuweilers to piece together this winning bloodline, but they expect six of last year's eight dogs to make up this year's team. Our dog team was like so steady and strong. It was it was really, really nice for me to just kind of like be able to count on. I had a huge core of dogs that had run with Martha for two years in a row. Um, and I, I've raced Bear Grease before, but like I, I think I told you last year, um, that was like my first time on a team that should do well. This will mark Erin's fifth time racing in the Bear Grease. Although she's completed this route once before, the nerves always kick in come race time, given the competition in the field. For WDIO Sports, I'm Chelsea Brown. And then the Here on WDIO.com. Absolutely. We'll bring you the start of the Bear Grease 120 and 40 races. Live coverage of that race starts right here on WDIO, our website, and news app at 11 o'clock. So stay with us all week for the best coverage of the John Bear Grease <laughs> Sled Dog Marathon. You bet. Chelsea and I will be providing live updates every morning and evening newscast until this race finishes. Plus, you can track the team's progress on our website, WDIO.com, and check out the WDIO app on your streaming TV to binge some of the best of the Bear Grease highlights from past races. We had fun putting those together. Absolutely. And on behalf of our entire WDIO team, thank you for joining us this morning. Cook County, Minnesota is the perfect winter wonderland. Crisp, clear days, incredible amounts of snow, and miles of groomed trails in the Superior National Forest. Plan your winter getaway at visitcookcounty.com. Your time is important, so kick off your day with Good Morning Northland, a hometown forecast you can rely on to prepare for the day ahead. Up to the minute school closing alerts so your family can adjust on the fly. The latest details from the big stories developing overnight and happening now. Local news you need to know. Community issues, events, and people that define life in the Northland. Tune in to the team the Northland trusts for morning news. Good Morning Northland, weekdays on WDIO. Honey, we can start up.